Hello, and welcome back to part two of Minutes on the Matter with Dickinson Wright. I'm Cynthia Leal, and today we will continue discussing non-disclosure agreements with Lance Anderson. So Lance, in our previous discussion, you mentioned the importance of non-disclosure agreements and that companies working together might have joint or two-way NDAs. And it seems like folks enter into two-way NDAs to be mutually protective. Um, why be concerned with two-way NDAs? This is an issue that you see a lot. It's, you know, companies perhaps not being advised by attorneys uh, deciding just to enter into a two-way or mutual NDA because it seems fair and balanced and, and uh, you know, it causes the least amount of controversy where in reality, a lot of times these discussions aren't set up for a mutual exchange of information. It has one party sharing confidential information to the other party. So if I'm the discloser or if I'm representing a client that's the discloser of information, uh, you don't necessarily want to have that mutual feedback loop where you could be disclosed information that you now have to keep confidential and you didn't intend on receiving that information. So while settling for the mutual NDA is often seen as the easy way. I always recommend that you try it to make the non-disclosure agreement fit the facts. If it's a one-way disclosure, have that one-way agreement put into place. If you get pushback or if you're ultimately forced to agree to a mutual or a two-way NDA, then you make that decision at that time. But always take the opportunity to, to make the agreement fit the facts. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today, and hopefully our listeners will be able to benefit from your sage advice on non-disclosure agreements. That concludes our today's edition of Minutes on the Matter with Dickinson Wright. Thank you so much, Lance. Thanks, Cynthia. If you have any questions, here is Lance's contact information. For additional information, check out our website, dickinsonwright.com.